Jeremy, thanks so much for being on the show. It's great to have you. Awesome. Happy to be here, Adam. Thanks for having me. Uh, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Jeremy Gall. I'm the founder and CEO of Breezeway. Uh, it's a property operations platform. I'm sure we'll get a shot to talk about that later. But i um, been in the hospitality industry since 2006. Started a company called Flipkey, a marketplace for vacation rentals. Um, and we did a strategic partnership with Expedia and then, and then sold that company to TripAdvisor to help power a lot of their um, vacation rental inventory. Um, so I spent a lot of time with property managers, particularly in the alternative hospitality um, sector. This is uh, a, a space that I find fascinating, this overlap between hotels and vacation rentals. And for all the hotel folks that are listening to the show right now, don't don't tune out because this is not this is we're not zeroing in on vacation rentals. This is a we're, we're trying to uh, give a little bit of clarity on what's going on in that like that gray space in between the two the two worlds. Um, so you're with Breezeway now. Uh, why don't for those that are not in the vacation rental space who have not heard of Breezeway before, what do you guys do? Yeah, and so and we're not we are we are um, supply agnostic. I'll give you a little um, maybe I'll back it up one second, which is that you know I think um, vacation rentals became really be what's really intriguing, and I think also for this audience is that vacation rentals sit at that sort of intersection of property management and hospitality, and I think over the last ten years what we've been seeing is that whatever space you're interacting with it's becoming more of a hospitality experience from commercial real estate to assisted living, hotels obviously, and then this flex space in between hotels and vacation rentals. And I really zoned in on that sort of thesis after I left Flipkey and started thinking about what I would do next. And so, you know, we work with hotels, we work with vacation rentals, some long-term um, property management as well, but all folks were thinking about how they deliver this hospitality experience. And for the you know the hotel audience, this would be very familiar. Think of think of Breezeway as um, as the new version of Hot Sauce, Hot SOS, mm -hmm. that can actually help you you know manage operations across unique space. And as consumers look for unique space, they look for these authentic experiences, whether they're staying in a hotel or an alternative lodging. Um, it's really challenging to deliver that service on a consistent basis. Hotels have become very, very good at this, particularly if the space is commodified and every, you know, every box looks the same. Um, still challenging, but kind of okay and, and you know, plausible to do. It becomes really, really hard when the space is unique, the standards are still high, and they're trying to execute across that. And so Breezeway is an operations platform to help you do that. It's like hot sauce, but on steroids and, and set up for that sort of an experience. Yeah. Um, the, you're right, the hotel space, um, and I've seen this myself as I, as, as we grow our own vacation rental management company, me coming from a hotel background, I mean, my brain is wired for systems and processes and, and how do you take as much friction out of that, um, that day-to-day -day operation as you can, because that's how some of these big box hotels are not only just are able to successfully deliver on the same thing all the time. Um, but it's the, it's the, the training processes, uh, and the predictability of your operation is what I think if you peel back the layers of the onion, that's, that's what's going on with in successful hotels. And in the vacation rental space, I've seen this myself where you've got, uh, different types of rooms, uh, different types of houses, different cleaners who, who may be contract or maybe employee. You just, there's there's another layer of complexity. And so people coming in that don't have necessarily a hospitality systems brain wiring background maybe struggle more than those that do. I, 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 I guess maybe I'll throw that out to you. I don't, I don't know what is a better um, skill set to bring to it. Uh, and then when you're thinking about what sort of tools you need to help you get your property up to where you want it to be, um, you know, a, a tool like yours, like hot sauce is well known in the hotel industry, um, as, as an ops platform. Um, you know, these are the, these are the things that, that are always in my brain as I'm thinking about how to best run this vacation rental company now. Yeah. I think it's really interesting, right? Like I, I think you, the demographic, and it's different, right? I think the, the, the demographic that's probably running, um, a portfolio of, of Marriott or Hilton hotels 
maybe a systems thinker, maybe an operations, you know, expert and really thinking that way. Uh, but my experience is that the independent hoteliers, the smaller operators, alternative resorts, vacation rentals, those folks are coming at it. They are hospitality wired. They're not systems thinkers. They're excited about it. They probably got into this business because they either have a hospitality background or a hospitality personality, and that's what attracted them to this business. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, you know, figuring out uh, the operational systems that really, you know, help them shine. Right. And so I think it's, it's, that's the opportunity now. And that's what's happened as software gets better and the platforms and the tools get better, the technology gets better, it's available to folks to help release a little of that burden so that you don't have to be that sort of operations thinker. You don't have to devote, you know, 30 days to figure out how to onboard, you know, put all your rules into a system to then figure out how to make it work for you so that then the output is really consistent. Yeah. Um, because I think you're right. The other thing I think that's happening is that the way you standardize and the way you deliver the experience is becoming the differentiator. Not only is it more important to consumers, to guests, um, but it's so much more important to your business. When it becomes harder and harder to compete against the online travel agencies from marketing, you really have to compete on the experience that you can deliver, and that has to be, that's your whole brand. You bring up a really good point. Um, you know, the, the, there was a strong use case for a long time in the hotel world that uh, a room was a room no matter where you were. And that's why when you go to a lot of these big box places, you could be in Cleveland or Miami and not know where you are. It's just a beige room that appeals to everybody and it's easy to clean. It's very systematic. Uh, but that with the rise of obviously the vacation rental thing goes without saying, that's a very different beast. But these lifestyle hotels where, or these hybrid sort of like, you know, big box brands like, you know, Marriott are, are, are throwing out lifestyle brands with different room uh, uh, elements and, and design and all of these funky things in the rooms. Like, you know, I, when would a housekeeper up until about three years ago have had to clean a record player in a room, right? Like there's all of these new things coming in now to try to like entice guests to come and stay at our place. Uh, but that just adds another layer of, of, complexity in the operation, which is part of the whole reason that we were, we wanted to talk today was, was how do you use a system like Breezeway to deliver on that, that new level of expectation while at the same time maintaining a uh, high touch, high service. That's yeah. to me, that's where the, that's where this comes together. Yeah. We talk to people a lot about this. Um, and we think that, you know, the promise of technology is to help you be more efficient, to improve your process, the way that you're working, certainly helps you save on cost. And then it can certainly open up some, some revenue opportunities, which, you know, maybe we'll get into, maybe we won't. But you have to make sure that the technology is not turning you into, you know, our goal is not to turn everyone into, you know, a robotic um, hospitality experience that has no soul and no human touch. Our goal is to help people really streamline everything that the guest can't feel. So then you can take that extra time and devote it to the guest experience in a human way that they can, that they can actually feel. It's like the, um, I haven't been there, but it's like the, um, the restaurant that, that, um, makes the automatic, Cheeseburgers. It's like that. Oh, that's cheeseburgers. Yeah, yeah. Um, Is that in New York? I think there's one in New York. Maybe one yeah. in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, but they have the same amount of staff. They're not using. They're not using the robotic cheeseburger machine to eliminate the number of people. They're just shifting the utilization of those people to then move them front of the house be more human centric, be more guest centric in the experience at the restaurant. And we think about it the same sort of way. Um, and then I think what it comes down to is like before when everything looks the same, especially in a hotel, you just need to know it's easy for somebody to clock in, press the button, 
update status via code from the from the room in the hotel and tell you that the room is clean. Um, and they can be trained and they can pay attention to the 500 page brand standard, know where the trash can is supposed to go under the desk, know where the remote's supposed to go, et cetera, and they're done. As soon as you start to add unique elements or lifestyle homes, or you start to see a lot of hybrid situations, independent hotels, really nice independent hotels who are adding vacation rentals on the side. I love this business, which is, you know, 100, 150 unit hotel resort that then adds 20 or 30 um, cabins or homes on the side and leverages the same um, room service and concierge and amenities platform of the resort for both types of experiences. It's phenomenal because that's exactly what people want. As soon as you start to mix that in, you are really challenging your operational staff to execute because no matter what, you're not going to be forgiven by the guest, you know, for um, a hair in the bathtub or mm -hmm. something that's out of something that's out of place. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's an excellent point. When you st when you start moving away from it takes forty minutes to clean a room and everything's done the same way to one room takes uh, one room takes an hour. One one room takes twenty minutes because it's just a little studio. One room you need no. Don't forget to put you know the milk in the fridge. Don't forget you know all of the. I start to think about how this mushrooms quickly and in my own experience, um, you know I. What comes to mind is is in the hotel or in the the housekeeping world in a hotel, they, it's very much run off of um, off of a credit system, where yep. uh, you know every room is is a is a certain number of credits, and every day a housekeeper gets as you know so many credits to clean, and you take away credits or add credits based on certain criteria. Uh, but that's all that all works in that uniform space. And as soon as you start again, when when, when do you take away rooms for a housekeeper to clean? when uh like what elements need to be added into a certain type of, of of room to lighten the workload it's a clunky way of sort of bringing up the point about um about that operational effectiveness and, and using the right tools to help you get there and again that's kind of what i want to dive into a little bit is is how does breezeway if you were just sort of peel back the back end of it uh what's the use case for a hotel What's the if if a hotel client called you up and said, "Hey, we're interested in talking to you about your application of your product in our in our business," um, what's the what's the meat you can give them? Yeah, I think it comes down to really effective scheduling. You know, we supplement, we work alongside the hotel and the resort property management and reservation system, and we supplement the front house systems with a back of house system for cleaning and room service and room maintenance. Um, and then what you get for that is really detailed scheduling um, that you can dial in based on a number of factors, as you were talking about, right? Like it becomes more than just the credit system of 40 minutes for a room. Maybe you're doing length of stay. Uh, maybe, you're, maybe you're changing things based, based on length of stay based on number of guests, based on guest profile, mm -hmm. um, based on some personalization, um, or just based on what the room is like, you know, or the space, is, the space is like. And then it's really smart scheduling and then validation of the work that's being done. I think this dynamic about consumer expectations um, and sort of first impressions when you walk in, um, that that applies equally to vacation rentals, alternative lodging and hotels. Like hotels are not immune from that same increase in consumer expectations, which yeah, means, you know, which means like when the guest walks in, it's got to be done right. Like everything has to be perfect. And so I think, you know, we work with many, many clients who have moved away from spot check inspections and quality assurance inspections to, 100% overlap between cleaning and inspection or, you know, leveraging smart digital tools to do a remote inspection and gather and validate information from the cleaning. So taking pictures, taking, mm -hmm. taking information, um, taking information back. So we help people do that as well. And then another thing I think is really interesting is like how you leverage that guest information. My kids, we stayed at Salamander Resort 
um, in Millburg, Virginia last year, beautiful place, um, had a contact there. And so they left like chocolate truck, you know, they left something in the room. Mm -hmm. My kids will not stop talking about it. Yeah. And I think that's, which is great. Right. But I think that's the kind of experience that people more and more as, as we return to travel, that personalization, someone's going to have to initiate that kind of experience in the room ever, more frequently, not just for 2% of the stays, but 70% of the stays. And how do, you ex, how do you execute on that? And then make sure that you've executed correctly on that. Know the guest profile in your cleaners and your staff can actually execute on that. So. We help people do that as well, like bring forward the guest profile, bring it into the field management tools um, so that people can execute on that. Uh, two questions come to mind. The first is uh, it's very easy to uh, change or update operational needs on the fly <clears throat> in a non-union environment. Uh, once you throw you know, a unionized housekeeping team into the mix, uh, that definitely gets a little bit more complicated. Um, have you, are you working in any unionized environments or have you had any exposure to, to the different needs on that side of the business? We have had, we haven't had um, too much exposure on the unionized side that I'm aware of from our client base. But what we do have is the same sort of thing, which is no matter the hospitality provider, right? There is a concern of how am I, how is my staff either, you know, employees, independent contractors, or external service partner contractors, how are they going to react to, you know, my desire to put a new tool in front of them to help them get their job done? Mm -hmm. um, and what's the adoption going to be? And so that's something we talk with clients about a lot. It's a, it's a valid concern. Um, but I think what we end up seeing um, many more times than not is that people really want to know what they're supposed to do. You know, staff yeah. really want to know what's expected of them to do a good job. They don't want to have callbacks. They don't want to be discredited for a clean that wasn't done right. They want to prove what they've done and what, and, and know, um, you know, know what the job is to get, to get done. Mm -hmm. And I think that applies, you know, union shops as well. The other thing that's interesting, right? is like, flexible travel, extended stays, people changing plans at the last minute, last minute travel. That changes the utilization of the hotel. That changes how many rooms you need to clean. That changes how you plan and schedule out. And you have mm -hmm. to be really flexible and then find a transparent, easy way to share that schedule and share those updates um, with the team so they know exactly what work they're getting into. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when that booking window is, is two or two, three, sometimes one day, 24 hours in some cases, it can be really difficult after you've already posted your schedule to think that, you know, your occupancy this coming weekend is, is going to be X. And then two days later, it, it's like a hockey stick because a special went out or the booking windows is short because that's how leisure travelers are booking these days. You have to rework everything. Exactly. And staffing is so hard. Um, staffing is such a challenge. We work with a client in Maryland, um, highly seasonal business. They hire seasonal, they hire seasonal employees. They were giving away, I think it was $2,500 hmm. to anyone. If you showed up to work, if you came to work every day at the end of the season, you were eligible for $2,500. Wow. And of the more than 200 people that they had, by the end of the season, only seven were eligible. <laughs> and so you have such a number of people, you know, labor is difficult these days. Um, and so you have to be really careful about your staff and keeping them happy and keeping them engaged. Um, but that puts a lot more pressure on the business to make. It's not just the last minute bookings. It could be a last minute no show at work service provider that can't make it, someone who's not there. And then you have to readjust the whole schedule to compensate for that. Yeah. And, and pretty quickly. Yeah. And it, it brings me to this idea of, um, just in time cleaning. And I think we talked about this a little bit, um, before we, when we did our intro call, um, and this idea of, um, 
I, I suppose kind of borrowed from the manufacturing industry where you, there's not warehouses full of things. It's like when something is ordered, it's made and then it's shipped out. And this idea of how, is there a way to take that idea uh, and apply it in the, the cleaning space? And is there a tool, you know, like Breezeway or something else that kind of helps facilitate that a little bit? And as I'm as I'm asking the question, I'm thinking about, you know, well, it's a lot easier to make a thing than it is to just have a, somebody on standby who may or may not know that they're working like literally that day. Um, but is there a, is there a way to kind of bring those two methodologies together? I think we see a lot of that. Um, and that's part of what we help some of our clients do as well. Um, I think it's becoming more popular, maybe out of typically out of necessity. It's typically just in time cleaning um, happens with our clients out of necessity when they're just slammed with a busy turnover mm -hmm. and there's only time. So what they'll do is they'll switch from a, a checkout clean and inspection um, and, and like room prep to just an inspection, mm -hmm. just a quick run through, make sure everything's okay. There's not room damage. They can close the folio or the reservation quickly and be done and then leave it alone and delay delay the cleaning um, until the next day so they can get through all the back-to-backs, all the check-ins and check-outs and make sure that those rooms are ready. And then they'll circle back. If there's time, they'll circle back same day. If not, they'll just leave them and wait until the next day mm -hmm. to get a little higher utilization out of staff and make sure that, you know, I think it's just, I think we did talk about this in our prep. You know, I showed up for a conference in Minneapolis and um, check in at four. Room wasn't ready until 7.30, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which is really late, yeah. really, really late. And I appreciate they're very busy, but that's, you know, that's very difficult. But I think, you know, there's, um, you look at the news and you look at what's happening with, with labor shortages and what we can continue to expect. I wouldn't be surprised if that becomes a little more, a little more typical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it, there's something that came out a, a few years back, and I think it was Marriott that brought it up. It, it was the 24-hour room access. So rather than just saying, you know, in in at three or four and out at eleven or noon, those are the windows. Uh, you had access to the room for 24 hours. So you tell us when you're going to be here, and we'll make sure that your room is available. So if if everybody knew that you were arriving at eight o'clock at night. Uh, well, you didn't actually, you arrived, you arrived early and it wasn't ready. But you know, if, if there was a way to set up your house where, where you could get realistic arrival times and then you sort of plan to have those rooms ready maybe an hour beforehand in case people arrive early, um, maybe that is a different way of thinking about it rather than having this cutoff time. Because what happens in the hotel space is, like, is all the housekeepers are off at 4 o'clock or 4.30. So that is... That's one of the reasons why that's the check-in time is because everybody just, that's when the shift is over. Uh, and sure, you might have a couple of PM housekeepers doing straggly rooms here and there. Uh, but that's what leads into this whole issue of like, there's so many things that come up in the day. P do not disturbs, uh, you know, rooms need, it takes two hours to clean a room because it was destroyed or somebody smokes in a room and it has to go out of service or like, there's just these things that pop up. Um, I also think that... Um... You know, it's super interesting. We're at the very beginning of, we would not be having these conversations six years ago for sure around convergence of hospitality inventory between vacation rentals, alternative accommodations, and hotels. It was like they were two completely separate beasts who, you know, there was no crossover. Um, but more and more, we're just at the beginning of that convergence of ways that I believe both types of supply are going to change um, and in really interesting ways. That 24 hour like stay is, is super interesting. One of the things that we see a lot of and we help a lot of clients with, right? And, and hotels haven't gotten to this yet, but it's coming And you know. I whether you like it or not. <laughs> whether or not that you like it or not. Yeah. I, I expect like the one of the, one of the advantages of going to like, Hotels will learn and pick up everything, and vacation rentals certainly have their attention after the pandemic um, and what's happened over the past year. Hotels are going to move quickly towards um, removing the check-in desk and getting you to your room yeah. 
without having to stop at the desk. It's a terrible experience. It's awful to like walk into the lobby and then wait for 20 minutes at the desk to check in and mm -hmm. give your credit card. It is nonsense. Um, but as soon as you start to get rid of that, it opens up a whole, it opens up this whole world of hotel revenue and operations, which becomes, which vacation rentals have embraced very well, which is if I know you've left early um, because I have keyless entry and exit and I'm using smart guest messaging, some of these tools that we offer as well, if I know you've left early and I can get a jump on 20% of my cleans, I can then offer 20% of my homes an early check-in. Yeah. And I can charge 150 bucks for that. Mm -hmm. um, and I can remove this concept of like everybody's in at four, everybody's out at 11. And I can sort of start to flex a little. And I can even sell some of those. If I start to learn the demographics, which hotels are very good at, if I understand the demographics of my clientele, I can predict that I'm going to have at least 10 to 15% early checkouts. So I'll pre-sell early check-ins to a certain number of guests and then others I'll offer on the fly. And the same thing with offering late checkout, whether people ask for it or not, it opens up this flexible nature where you could start to ask for it because you're dialing in this operation mm -hmm. and you know that enough people, you know, you can manage that and that you can actually clean those rooms. Yeah. And I think that's a big, that's going to be a big revenue driver. It's a nice experience too. And that's that's the benefit of looking at some of these new technology providers, like like what you're talking about. What we're talking about today, these a lot of these legacy systems um, require. Well, for, sometimes you don't even have the ability to do what you're talking about right now. Just in a typical, you know, regular hotel PMS VIN card system, highly manual. Whether you know going in and checking to see if people check out. I mean, how many people are listening now? Uh, where you, you know, if you worked at the front desk, you'd take a, a printout of all your departures for the day, uh, at one thirty and see who's still technically checked in. And you have to go do room checks to see if they're, if the rooms are vacant. So you could settle the bills and then you can never check somebody into an occupied room, even if they're gone. So you got like, this is a, this is highly manual, um, uh, and, and investment in some of these new technologies, keyless entry, um, you know, a lot of the stuff we're talking about today. It, to me, that's where the ROI is. When you can start putting numbers to exactly what you're talking about right now, sure, it might it might be X thousands of dollars to put a, just put new locks on uh, on your doors. And I'm I know I'm oversimplifying it, but the point is is that is is rather than just getting stuck in some of these old ways of thinking, there are huge opportunities out there. If you if I what I get so inspired by is by looking at what the vacation rental space is doing and they've taken so much from the hotel space. What can the hotel space take back from the vacation yeah. rentals? And that's, that's a yeah. big one. Yeah. I love this. You know, we do this, we have clients who take advantage of this. SMS messaging is fantastic. It's such a, we offer an, um, you know, a guest messaging platform. And the reason why we got involved in that business was because when a guest is in property, that communication with the guest, I believe moves from a marketing um, initiative to an operational brand initiative. You know, you're, you're, you're not pen pals. You're sending, a, you're sending a message to the guest to confirm that everything is, you know, that they're having a good stay, to understand if there's something that you need to do, there's action that you need to take to improve that guest experience or deliver, deliver additional service. And once you've done that, you've opened up the window then to send messages to confirm that someone has left. And confirming that checkout is huge because you just may never know um, and you can't close out that room no matter how many room checks you do. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, if you can confirm that someone has left and you get that message and then automatically notify the cleaner that is assigned to that room to go and clean it because you have this clear connection between the messaging and the operational platform. Mm -hmm. you know, it is a massive advantage to getting through, getting through your work day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one last question, Jeremy, before we wrap, uh, I, I know that if there's people who have made it this far into the episode and they're thinking, yeah, but you know, does it, does it interface with our, 
system. And I, not to put you on the spot about interfaces or anything, uh, but what what does that look like on the back sure. end with some of the bigger property management systems out there? Yeah, sure. It's it's critical. Um, it's absolutely critical that these systems work well together. Um, you know, our belief is that the role of a hospitality provider um, is so multidisciplinary and requires, you know, technology can help so much that an all-in-one solution is likely not the best fit. Mm -hmm. And so we have to work well with the front office reservation management systems. So in the hotel space, we work really closely with Muse and CloudBeds um, and Springer Miller systems. Mm. Um, and we're working on our operating integration as well. Um, and in the vacation rental, um, you know, an alternative sort of accommodation spectrum, um, too many to name, probably another 40. Um, <laughs> most of them, if, you, if not yeah, all of them. Most of them. If you use one of them, um, chances are we work with them. Yeah. And a lot of them also are, you know, targeting, you know, folks like Guesty and Streamline are targeting and track, um, target a lot of hotel customers as well. Like track has plenty of hotel customers that are using their system. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, uh, there, there's a use case, uh, for, big and small hotels alike you will it, you know, like, it's exciting that you said you're you're working on something with opera because that that oracle animal that i mean they that's the big dog for sure yeah it's a beast but you know i think there's there's a reason why um even you know folks like you know like cloud beds has an enormous market share growing really quickly same thing with news um and we read you know the goal is we read all the reservation information out so that your staff, your back office staff has the same benefit of, you know, a tape chart and a, and a room schedule as your front office staff does. It's just now all that reservation information is tied very tightly with the operational workflows um, and your staff so that you can see visibility where everybody is, how much do they have in their day, is my team overloaded, you know, who's going to run out of time, what's my room status, and then we push that back to the reservation system as well. That's great. Uh, Jeremy, I really appreciate you coming on the show and, and giving us a breakdown of Breezeway and what's going on over there. I, this is uh, this is an exciting space, uh, and I hope you know some people are interested and they want to reach out. So if they are, uh, what's a good place for them to go? Yeah, breezeway.io, or they can send, you know, send a message to VIP at breezeway.io. Um, we're happy to also, if they reference the show, you know, happy to provide a discount and, um, and really treat people well, cut out the implementation fees, et cetera. Um, but even if you're just curious, you know, we work with a lot of people. We have a very consultative approach. We're happy to chat with people um, because I think that makes our product better and, and we can learn as well. So happy to make some connections with folks and um, really appreciate being on the show. Um, it's, it's really insightful and I love, um, I love what you're doing, Adam. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Jeremy. Thanks again. We'll talk to you soon. Excellent. Excellent.